Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we are going to be looking at Rammstein for the first time on this channel. Now, I think I heard them when I was younger. I remember this like creepy voice singing slash saying, Du, du hast, du hast mich. And as a kid, I totally did not get it. I was like, what is this? They call this singing? But hopefully now, now that I'm older and wiser, I can have a greater appreciation for harsh vocals. And I'm really excited to get to analyze them for the first time as an adult. Now, we're going to be listening to the song Deutschland. This was a recent release from Rammstein. They have released seven albums to date, and this is from their most recent album. And it is about the history of Germany. Deutschland is Germany. And it covers, I believe, about 2,000 years of history. And I understand that there is some controversial history in this. And reading through those lyrics a little bit, it's interesting to hear this conflict in wanting to love a country, but also being so frustrated by that history. Big shout out to Andy. Thank you so much for help with the prep on this, especially for the translation. It's really going to be extremely helpful while I do this first listen and analysis. Let's get to it. Not at all what I was expecting. This sounds more like a, a film score than a single released by a band. And that's because we have things like, uh, obviously the musical bedding is evolving underneath it. It's, uh, it's evolving very quickly. And you also have lots of foley in here. So you have the sounds of footsteps, you have the sound of wind, and like the sound of armor clanking. So definitely more like a film score than what I would expect to maybe hear on the radio. Huh. Uh, the sound of that head coming off, the, the goop was really fantastic. Just gotta say that Foley was uh, on point. <laughs> and I'm getting really strong reminiscence of um, both Westworld and Ex Machina, uh, two, two uh, productions that I love very much, both the movie and the TV series. Well, okay, this is cool. Very high production quality. Okay, listen, like just in this short amount of time, listen to like all of the different kinds of sounds that they're bringing in. You have like a low, um, you have like a low droning sound that's often associated with AAA blockbuster films like Independence Day, that kind of thing. And then it broke for a moment, it had like just a moment of monks chanting, which you would associate with something super ancient or possibly timeless. And then right after that, you have this electronic intro on top, which that begins to sound more like a song that I would hear on the radio. <sighs> Very interesting. to say I'm a little confused by the visuals. They're all stunning, like very, very vibrant. I like them, it has a lot of emotion in the visuals, but they feel like they're taken from all kinds of time periods. So I'm not sure right now if there's a through line that I should be looking for. Um, we have obviously sort of medieval armor, 
but then she was earlier in a wheelchair at one point, um, which would be, you know, a later technology. And then we had spacesuits at one point as well. So I'm not really sure um, how these are all blending together just yet. Whoa, strong imagery. child just was like, du, du hast, mich, mich, is he going to say mich? Are we calling back to that song that I, I like that I remember that weird voice from? Anyhow, uh, I need to listen to that entrance once more because the child in me was louder than he was. Im Herz vereint, wir sind schon sehr lang zusammen, dein Atem kalt, das Herz in Flammen. So his voice. Um, and the way he's using this technique, it reminds me a little bit of Sprechstimme, which is, um, it's considered often like a more modern classical singing technique, uh, that is found really with Sch uh, Schoenberg, I think maybe a little bit of Berg too. So later, um, much later in classical music than what we often consider classical music. It's, uh, this singing that's kind of speaking at the same time. A lot of people can't stand it, just FYI, but you might go check it out, Sprechstimme, and see what I'm talking about. Uh, it's really interesting to me that he's using it here, and then he'll go into really nicely sustained, perfectly beautifully on pitch, and very resonant notes. So he's very clearly uh, not incapable of singing a beautiful line. He's using it for an effect to really um, draw attention to certain words. I'm gonna go back a little bit. Oh, he has what it sounds like a very nice uh, round baritone voice. <laughs> and by the way, that moment where it's like, has like a little more uh, uh, rasp or, or dirty sound in there. That's, I believe, some false chord activation. Sind schon sehr lang zusammen, dein Atem kalt, das Herz in Flammen. Interesting. Um, it, to me, the lyrics here, they're particularly interesting because it's going over a bunch of different pronouns, essentially. Du, ich, wir, ihr. So you, I, us, and then you, plural. And I, I think that that's bringing, uh, it's an interesting message because it's talking about a bunch of different people, but including the individuals among the whole. So whatever this message is, um, it's going to be something that is applicable to all of us, both um, in a larger society, but then it might apply to us differently depending on the individuals within there. A very, very interesting to pause in all of those different pronouns. Uh, let's go back to that. Uh, and the word that they're saying right afterwards to uh, is always like you are, so it's all to be verbs put right after those pronouns. Oh. 
Okay, stopping one more time. Uh, Deutschland. So uh, let's go to this, my lyrics here again. So du, ich, wir, ihr, Deutschland. So it's saying like all of these different um, pronouns are a, a part of Germany. So uh, about, uh, it sounds like it's about growing up within Germany, which all of the band members of Rammstein are, they grew up in Eastern Germany, which would certainly give them a wealth of culture, I think, to draw from for making a video like this. Uh, wow, very strong visuals there. Um, uh, I want to just speak a little bit to his enunciation. I love how clear his vowels are and even the consonants. This is something I learned when singing in German too. I think in German more than in English often, it, uh, a person will sing through the consonants and vowels more, but especially through the consonants. And English or obviously in French a bunch will drop those off to become more casual uh, but it's much more common to hear somebody in German sing through something like a final in really cleanly <laughs> lyrics here again. I love the way that he's essentially, I love in German how you can mash words together to make new words. Um, so you have überheblich, überlegen, übernehmen, übergeben, überraschen, überfallen, Deutschland, Deutschland, über allen. And he's essentially playing off of these different kinds of rhyme, rhymes. And interesting, um, this idea of Germany overall at the end. By the way, that translation of all of those Ubers in English would be overbearing slash arrogant, superior, to take over, to surrender, surprising, to attack, and then Germany, Germany over everyone. Again, thank you, Andy. Really helpful translation here. Um, I think it's so interesting to hear uh, how he's taken all of these words to essentially almost talk about maybe how they were taught in Germany or maybe some past, especially some past ideas in Germany and saying, uh, how do you uphold a country that you maybe feel has done some awful things, um, but also can be full of some really cool people. Um, maybe this is my interpretation of it. I know some amazing, amazing Germans. And at the same time, Germany has this really dark uh, history. So uh, I think it must be conflicting to uh, live and, and be a German and wonder, you know, how do I... How do I love my country while at the same time saying no, that this past was totally wrong? Um, interpretation for the moment. Let's keep going. Überlegen, übernehmen, übergeben, überraschen, überfallen, Deutschland, Deutschland, überraschen. Just want to shout out here uh these images are really powerful and to me really disturbing uh very uh, just incredibly disturbing um it's i'm curious more about the messaging that's being said here um obviously they've taken great pains to get really really good production on this um 
the message I imagine is what they're trying to bring to all is, is this, um, again, this feeling of national pride, but how? So interesting. Um, one of the lines that really stands out to me is Germany, uh, mein Herz in Flammen, will dich lieben und verdammen. So my heart in flames wants to love you, wants to damn you. So that conflict is very present. And, uh, and I definitely feel like from the imagery here, we get that sense of how, how this, we, there are these terrible things that have happened. Um, but how do we keep going? <laughs> I want to speak really quickly to the rhythm in here as well. Um, uh, you have a standard 4-4 that's happening in the bigger beats, but then underneath it, there's an interesting subdivision. You have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. How many threes was that? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> so uh, 12 plus 4 essentially is going to be your 16. So that's how you get the 16 little notes that go into the four big beats. That way you get that indiv uh, individual, uh, essentially, if we were to say a quarter note, uh, which is like one beat, uh, that would be divided into sixteenths. And then uh, you have one, two, three, 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 four to help make it up at the end. This kind of subdivision makes it feel like we're not really in a straight four, four. It makes it feel like um, something else is going on and the one two three four has a certain drive that goes back into it because it feels suddenly uneven and it makes you almost topple into the next measure it's kind of cool Again, loving that um, the sound of these words following each other, uh, it feels very much like poetry. Very, very interesting lyrics. Dein Herz in Flammen, will ich lieben und verdammen. Mein Atem kalt, so jung und doch so alt. Deine Hmm. I just want to uh, talk about that that uh, phrase. Meine Liebe kann ich dich nicht. Ah, meine Liebe kann ich dir nicht geben, which is my love I cannot give to you. Like uh, this this video is just has a very strong emotional impact. It, uh, it shakes me inside and I really appreciate that the visuals are so shaking along with these lyrics, with this message. I feel like it, um, it makes sense all together. Um, but if I were to just watch the video on its own or just look at the lyrics on their own, I might get a, a little, I just wouldn't get the whole picture. Uh, and I understand that this, when there was a preview of this video, there was some controversy about it. And I think that's probably because that the whole picture wasn't coming together. Uh, this is this is very interesting and uh, very poignant message for sure. Interesting. 
interesting. There's a female voice that's doing a uh, vocalization there that sounds um, sounds very ethnic in quality. I would put it Middle Eastern in that uh, vocalization, um, but it could sometimes be, some people sometimes associate that sound with something that is just more ancient, essentially. Uh, so listen to that one more time. Kind of curious uh, if that's supposed to be um, the woman who has the amazing uh, costume. Well, everybody's got amazing costumes, but hers is particularly, particularly awesome. Uh, side note, one of the things that I learned about Rammstein that I really appreciate is that when they release something, they always put that it's composed by all of the band members, and it will not be released and yes, unless they uh, unanimously agree to release it. So I love that solidarity within the band. So I don't think that this next bit of music is part of Deutschland itself, um, but I'm going to let it play out a bit. Quick, uh, quick word about uh, piano and often piano placement within film. You, we often will have a piano song when we're looking for something really emotional that depicts, often it's for depicting a lot of loss, um, but, uh, or sometimes it's sentiment or uh, most of the time it's just to show a lot of emotion. Uh, strings and solo piano are very good with emotion like this, uh, whereas something like the drums or often guitar or uh, a, a rock band, you wouldn't expect that to have this same kind of uh, sentimentality or um, feeling of emptiness, perhaps. So this is, uh, it's really interesting to me that there bringing in the solo piano bit here at the end because um, I feel like it, it captures the solemnity of the video overall and it allows the heart to reflect in a different way upon what has just been shown. Uh, and also, um, shout out this, I believe, for my notes, this is the song Zona, it's a piano version of it. Okay, gonna keep going. And within the, oh, wow, Johan Johannesson, uh, he's amazing, amazing, um, great composer. So the, um, and just a uh, heads up, there's a lot of suspension and release in the harmony of this piano. So um, that's why a lot of times you feel this like leaning of like, a painful moment and then a resolution to something else. It is actually written into the harmony of the piano. And I think that that is incredibly appropriate uh, in that same context of what has come before and the feelings that a person might be having at this point.
this um this piano at the end uh was making my eyes water it I feel so much loss in it beautiful beautiful the overall key of course is in minor which um, again brings forth that sadness and uh, I think it's interesting the buildup uh, dropped down and you felt more in the bottom of the piano and then when it goes up to the end and the treble clef at the end that's when it feels like you have uh, that that loss even more profoundly uh, it feels like there's a building a well of emotion as that bass and the more sound is being activated in the piano overall and then it releases not only within this harmonic suspension uh, harmonic suspension and release but when it goes up into the top you feel the emptiness in the piano down below just beautiful just beautiful listen to that ending just a little bit more this is gorgeous and i love all of the credits here i obviously this is put together by a huge team and a very, I'm super impressed, impressed with the production quality. The sound, as if you can hear it, there's a sound of the pedal pushing down and releasing here in the piano. Um, this is one of the things that I look for um, in recordings of piano. There are essentially virtual libraries that mimic piano sounds that actually do very well. But if I don't have that pedal pushing down and releasing, it feels so fake to me. And I love hearing it because it feels or more organic. It feels like a real piano in the performances I've heard. Um, and... Uh, if it's a really good virtual library for a piano, um, Impact, Soundwork, uh, Impact Soundworks has a really great library, for example, the, then they'll have access to uh, edit and use that pedal pushing and have really, really clear, beautiful sounds that you can essentially grab from a keyboard like this that make it sound like it were a huge grand piano. Anyhow, uh, I think this is probably totally live recorded within a piano, but, um, there is a chance because uh, there are some great virtual libraries out there that it could be something that was uh, also done in some software. Uh, the person would have to be very good in the first place to even get close to this though, so don't think that's something you can totally just jimmy and make happen. Uh, listen to that one more time. It's really interesting to me to listen to Rammstein as an adult and realize a few different things. The first thing is that the messaging is so powerful. As a kid, that was over my head. I, I didn't get it at all. And now I'm looking at it and I lived for a year in East Germany as well. And uh, I feel I feel just profoundly I think that's a sign of something really great that's been done is when it can make you feel and reflect and have an impact. I really appreciate that about what they've done. And in addition, I think I thought previously that the vocals didn't have much substance. But once I heard the fact that this vocal can have um, this beautiful baritonal quality that has... Um, Honestly, it has like uh, some nice vibrato in there, has some good resonance, but then also can go down and have more of this fry sound in it and uses speaking as a way of just extending the singing. I think it definitely merits more appreciation than I've previously given it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Thank you so much to those of you who have been suggesting Rammstein. I really appreciate the chance to get to listen to this now and appreciate it now. And again, thank you to Andy for help with this prep work. 
And also, thank you to all of you who've been recommending all kinds of songs on the channel. If you want to keep recommending those, please put them down in the comments below this video. That's where we look for recommendations most. And you can also come and say hello to me any Monday, Tuesday, or Friday at 8 a.m. Uh, just so you know, during live premieres, there are no ads. So if you want to be watching this video without any ads whatsoever, come and join us in a live premiere sometime. And you can also find me on Patreon, or if you want to learn more about music in general or about singing, I have courses about that at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.